So magnetic fields can explain this complicated pattern, but why would the sun be magnetized? Why would you have magnetic fields in the first place? Well, it's interesting because obviously we see that there's some relation, there's some correlation where the sunspots are happening, these magnetic field lines, but it doesn't necessarily mean the sunspots are causing it, the magnetic field lines are causing that. We actually have to start looking at the other structure and motion and activity of the sun. And the crucial thing here is what's called differential rotation. Now the Earth, rotates once every 24 hours, and every bit of the Earth rotates every 24 That's hours. Right. But the Sun's not solid. It doesn't have to all rotate at the same speed. That's right. And it doesn't. This has been known for hundreds of years, that in fact, the equator of the Sun spins a little bit faster than the poles. And you can actually see how the sunspots move across the Sun and measure this. This is how they've known it for so long. Yeah, but this has been known for over 2,000 years. Both ancient Chinese and Egyptian astronomers had found this out with the sunspots. So it's... Um, and this is really important because it's actually going to produce the magnetic field. Okay. It actually occurs below the surface. The helioseismology we talked about last yep. time is so precise, you can actually measure the rotation inside the sun. And what you can see is that the radiative zone, the zone where the photons are just random walking the way out, all rotates as a solid body. Yep. When you're into the convective zone, you get different speeds, different altitudes, and uh, different depths. So you're spinning around and you're convecting then, therefore, differently as you go. So that means there's different bits of gas are moving relative to each other. It's this relative motion of different bits of gas that powers a natural dynamo. Because these, these are ionized gases, by the way. So they're carrying the magnetic fields with them and they can pull them out of shape and strengthen them. So here's the current a generally accepted model which is a solar minimum, you have a fairly simple magnetic field. Magnetic field lines, we see them coming out near the poles. Yep. We can't see what's happening in the middle, but we assume they more or less just run from north to south, somewhere through the interior, maybe just underneath the surface. That's right. And it's not too dissimilar on Earth, right? Comes That's out the right. North Pole, comes the South Pole. That's right. And just like in the Earth, we can't see what's happening under the surface. Um, but then, of course, the middle is spinning faster than the poles. So, so the pole is spinning slower, you're starting to pick up speed here, so it's causing the lines to almost bend. That's right, because being a plasma there, it's carried along by the motion of the gas. So the fields, instead of pointing north-south, get wrapped more and more like some sort of donut, a sort of toroidal shape. Okay. And that will get more and more wrapped up. So you're really the... winding up these lines around the middle parts of the sun. So you, you know, with these very strongly wound, just imagine like some giant bit of rubber band and you spin around, you get it wrapped up in this horrible ball. And what's going to happen is magnetic fields actually become buoyant when they get really wrapped up tight. Okay. As, um, probably a horrible analogy, but they, they, it's like um, if you go to a hernia, your uh, intestines can like pop out because um, uh, of the pressure inside. Yep. So what's happening is you get like sun hernias, that some of these wound up fields will pop out and form a loop. And where they pop out are the loops where we see coming out. Oh, that's what we're seeing here. That's right. What we're seeing is magnetic field that's wrapped up really tight underneath has popped out and in two places out. into the much less dense gas. It's, oh, relax, I'm away from all those dense squashed magnetic fields inside. And that bulging part is also where we see the sunspots. That's right. So when the magnetic fields come out, they actually cool down the surface a bit to make that bit of the sun a bit darker, okay. which is what makes it the sunspot, because the, the particles can then fly away along the magnetic fields out into space and cool that bit down. Yep. So that's the general idea. And as the solar cycle gets hot, goes on, the magnetic fields get wound more and more yeah, tightly. They're just spinning them for years. And they get closer and closer to the equator. And eventually, the magnetic field lines start nearly bumping into each other. Okay. And then a strange thing can happen. If you have two magnetic field lines that are very close in a plasma, yep. they can actually reconnect. So instead of line here, line here, they might snap together yep. and reconnect in a different geometry. And that's what's thought to happen here. You get these reconnection events. Yep. And what this does is it actually connects the magnetic fields across the equator, cancelling um, them out, okay. and causes some magnetic field lines to escape into space. So some go back in, but some actually can pop out and then just keep going through space. That's right. So the overall effect is to weaken things. And so magnetic fields escape into space or reconnect, weakening the magnetic field inside. Yep. And that causes an next solar minimum. In fact, what we believe happened is every time you get a solar minimum, the magnetic field of the sun flips around. So what was the North Pole becomes the South Pole and vice versa. So essentially they've connected so much that now they've gone the other way. And this is a complicated procedure, but you can do supercomputer models of it, and it all seems to kind of work. It generates the right sort of field strengths and the right sort of directions powered by this differential rotation. And you can actually see the magnetic fields reversing because you can measure whether the field's going out or going in by various complicated techniques so you can kind of see it's coming out in one pole and then in the other 
So it's kind of bouncing and rotating between poles. It's actually a 22 year cycle, not an 11 year cycle. It has 11 years one way around and then 11 years the other way around. Well, I guess that's kind of amazing that those two numbers actually agree, right? They actually show that this is probably the right model. I don't think it's just coincidence purely that the numbers just double it. Yes, so it's uh, basically the magnetic field line doesn't care which way around. It goes, this behaves the same way, only it's just north is swapped with south. Yep.